Hello and welcome to Infinity. Blend ranges is a very useful tool, but very confusing. I didn't quite get my head around it until very recently. I thought, come on, Dave, you need to figure this thing out. I also wanted a way to be able to explain it. How can I show how it works? And very simply, I've got here one layer here goes from black to white, which is the top layer here. And underneath it is another layer that goes from black to white at the bottom up here. So if you're seeing it horizontal, it's the bottom. If you're seeing it vertical, it's the top. Blend ranges can be found wherever you see a little cogwheel like this. It also can, turns up on adjustments. So if I click on that and I get here two graphs. And around here there's a bunch of stuff. I'm going to ignore that lot for now because the difference between these two is the key thing to figure on now. So the left hand one here says source layer ranges. It's talking about what it's going to do with this top layer. And so what I get here is from left to right it goes from black to white in the same way that curves does. Up and down is transparency. So I go from the bottom is completely transparent to the top is completely opaque. So I'm only going to see the top layer. So if I was going to put a point on here so that holds that there and just bring down this bit here. As I bring it down, it should make the top layer more transparent so I see the bottom layer. So as I do this, you can see that something's happening there. And if I go all the way down and across there, I've got a very hard boundary here. You can see the way it has effectively snicked off the top layer and here's the bottom layer. It's so this is saying anything down here, this darker area in the top layer, make it transparent. So you might expect that at the other end, you get the same sort of thing. And I should snip off a layer from the top layer here and we'll see the bottom layer there. And there you go, it happens okay. So there you go, the left hand graph applies to the current layer, the top layer, where you've got the blend ranges working and it controls, use the top layer to control the amount of transparency in that layer. The next one's a bit more confusing but it's not difficult. So if I do the same thing here and bring this down across here, what seems to be happening here is the bottom layer is appearing through here. The top layer has been snipped off along here. So how's that working? Oh, because we're talking about darkness here, this is the dark end of the spectrum. And what it's done, it's used the darkness in the bottom layer to control the transparency in the top layer. That's why he's talking about underlying composition ranges. And so what happens going to happen up here when we're talking about the top end here, then we expect that the lighter areas of the bottom layer, which is going to be up here because it goes from black to white on the bottom, that is going to be used to control the transparency of the top layer. And there you go, that's how it's happening. So this is the basic thing in the way that the blend ranges works. However, this is not the whole story. And it's because here we've been using black and white and that's deliberate because I just want to show what happens with the luminosity. But if I go to the next layer, the next level here, Let's move this across here and put the blend ranges over here so we can see what's happening. Now, let's have a look at kind of effect you might have. Typically with this, if I click on here and pull this down here, what's going to happen? What it's done is made some things transparent because I've got nothing underneath here. I'm just working on this single layer. It's made transparent 
the blues and it, you might expect the blacks to be transparent these are the darker areas because i'm saying make the dark on this layer here transparent but why is it just the blue is there something wrong here and what it is it's determining the luminosity lightness of the colors using a scheme which says blue is perceptually dark when you look at colors blue looks darker than the rest so if i go back up here you can see look at this blue looks darker yellow looks lighter so when i pull this down it's using that to determine how light or dark it is not the level of saturation i can go to the other end of this and pull this one down and now what's going to happen is it's going to go for the lighter one so this should now hit the yellow and the white let's here we go so now yellows and whites have gone and i can put the blues back to see what's left there so now the darks have come back but now i've turned down the lights so this is a way of controlling the lights on this if i reset this and if i pull this down here you can see it gets gradually more transparent but in differing amounts yeah the yellow there is pretty much still up and that's because yellow sits up here imagine the colors ranged along here from blue at this end to yellow at the other end according to perceptual darkness so we've turned down the blues more than we've turned down the yellows and this can be useful and it can be jolly annoying so what happens over here if i put one over here and i try to pull this down here oh nothing's happening what about if i just pull this down nothing's happening again here and that is because there's no layer underneath to provide the control for this right now let's move on to adjustments so if i click on here and put on hsl now i've got an adjustment underneath here by the way to use blend ranges down here there's a little cogwheel on the there as well so if i turn down saturation here it all goes to gray now then usually with hsl with any adjustments you're going to typically use the right hand graph for controls which i'll explain why in a little bit and if i pull down the right down here perhaps unexpectedly this is letting the blue through because this is the darker bit but you can't see why here so i need something here to help me understand and if i try to do just let, let's make the darks darker i'm going to get this effect here where i've got more transparency and an effect here where the blue is showing through a lot and the yellow isn't and the red is more because red comes after blue in terms of effective darkness it's very confusing isn't it so what's going on here to explain this more i'm going to put in another layer so i'm going to delete that hsl i'm going to hit ctrl j to duplicate it and then i'm going to put an hsl on the top layer and this is effectively the way that it actually works when you're doing a normal nested thing like this it effectively is creating this thing it's saving you the space of having to do a duplicated layer and the, the amount of file bits and bytes that you need for that but this is the way it really works so now if i turn down the saturation on this what I'm effectively going to do is go to the top layer there and do the blend ranges for that. The blend ranges will sit up here all the time, by the way, and it will just be applied to whichever layer is selected. So if I now click on this one here and bring this down, what we're seeing is we're using the bottom layer here as the control. So the darkest areas in this are being used to show through the grayer area that we had there so the hsl has made this gray but the blue is being allowed through from the bottom 
because it's seen as being darker because I'm allowing through that darker so the bottom layer is the control. Similarly, if I go this end here and bring this down, then yellow is the control. And the others are varying amounts here, depending on waiting until it gets dark enough to be allowed through. And similarly here, let's see what this does. What if I bring this one down here? All I'm getting here is just the ones which are dark enough. So this has a different effect because this is applying it to itself here. And similarly here, if I pull this down here, see it goes through on the whites because I'm going through on the lighter area. So I'm using that as the top layer is the control now, not the bottom layer. And this has some useful effects because if I bring this one down here, just drag this down here, I've got this effect just like if I had just a one layer here and the HSL underneath and the way I was using the blend ranges on the HSL. Now I'm using it on the pixel layer. This has the effect of blue at this end, yellow at this end on this graph so that the blue comes through from the bottom layer more and the yellow comes through less. If I reset that and do it on this side and look what happens as I gradually come down here, it's an even amount coming through. That can be really useful. So if you've got the just an ordinary layer with an HSL on it and you're doing the blend ranges on the HSL layer, not the top layer, which is the normal way you might do it, you get an even amount coming through. You haven't got the blue jumping out. And if you want to affect colours evenly, not perceptually, then this is the way to do it. The left hand graph becomes useful. And so I can bring it all the way down there and I get that improved effect. And I can also move around here and have other effects, but that is quite good. And I often will bring this down to say like the midpoint there, if I want to make it sort of a more kind of like cool type effect. Hmm. Let's do this on a real picture. So let's bring this across a bit here so we can see what's going on more. So now I'm going to do a HSL on this. I'm going to turn the saturation down, but now I'm going to play around with these. This one, if I turn this down here, red is affected further up here, so I'm getting a certain amount a lot more of the red through, and the blue is going to come through more because these are those are down at this end. And if I go the other way, then the yellows are going to come through more. I've got less effect of the red and the blue here. However, here, if I bring this down, everything comes down evenly itself. So everything, all the colours are gradually coming through nicely. So if I want an even decline, then I can do this. And if I pull this one down, I get the combined effect of that, which sometimes is what I want to do. So now I've got a lot more colour control by using both graphs in the blend ranges. If I bring, and you can see, the way to do it is just play with it. And this is the bottom line of a good way to do things when you're working with images and the blend options, the blend ranges. It says blend options here. It should say blend ranges. Oh, I'm just picky. And you can use both of them and find which works. So if you want to darken off the darks here, I can do that, or I can turn the other way around here and turn around the other way here, and you get all kinds of slightly different effects. So you can be really subtle in your color control. Okay, that's it. Sorry for going on at length, but I hope it's all making more sense now. Thank you very much for watching.